breaking news from KXAN News. That breaking news as of a half hour ago, Hurricane Idalia now a Category 4 storm. And this is a live look in Cedar Key, Florida from our weather cameras there. And you can see the wind, the rain, the waves just pummeling the shoreline here. Yeah, obviously impacting the signal that we're getting live there. Good morning, everyone. Some parts of Florida have already started to feel the effects of Hurricane Idalia. Now this video is from Key West and it shows heavy wind and rain pummeling that area. The storm is gaining power as it crawls towards Florida's Gulf Coast. The video you're seeing right now from Tampa showing flooded streets there. It is expected to bring what is called life-threatening storm surge to parts of the state, including Tampa Bay. Idalia has already forced mass evacuations in some of the low-lying areas of the state. Texas sent in its own group of first responders to Florida on standby right now as this storm is moving through. Kristen, what can you show us now about where it's at, where it's going? Well, I want to begin with tropical satellite here because you can see this storm has really intensified over the last 12 to 24 hours. Going to bed last night, it had winds of about 120 miles per hour. This morning, hurricane hunters were out. They found even stronger winds. This is now a category four storm with 130 mile per hour hour winds. It's about 50 to 60 miles offshore as far as the center goes uh, from Florida, but this is already impacting the entire state of Florida and even portions of southern Georgia in a very big way. So the yellow is the tropical storm force winds. The hurricane force winds are in orange. Look, that stretches from the state line all the way down south of Tampa this morning, and this is going to continue to make its way through portions of Florida, Georgia, and even impact the Carolinas by dinner time tonight. This will be the story when it comes to weather across the nation today. And we're going to keep tabs on that for you as we get into the later part of the morning when we expect a landfall along the coast of the Big Bend there in Florida. Here at home, nothing to worry about. Our Lorenz and Lorenz 360 camera shows a mainly clear sky. Our temperature 72 degrees. We've got most areas in those 60s and 70s right now. Back into the low 100s we go today with a forecast high of 101 here in Austin. Not a whole lot to speak on when it comes to rain chances, but we'll talk about why that 10% chance is there coming up in your first warning forecast. Thank you, Kristen. The trial continues today for the 6th Street mass shooting suspect. DeAndre White accused of killing 25-year-old Doug Cantor and injuring more than a dozen others. Mostly innocent bystanders that night after firing into a crowd after a confrontation back in 2021. The family of the man killed saw painful body camera video in court as opening statements started yesterday morning. KXN's Brianna Hall spoke with Cantor's family shortly after the court wrapped up. Nothing could prepare you to see your younger brother in his last waking moments. A devastated Cantor family sat in front of reporters Tuesday evening. Yeah. Photos of 25-year-old Doug behind them, just like the first day of the trial for the man accused of killing him. I have to tell you, it was hard today to see that clip <coughs> of my son just in pain and ask him for help. Um, I miss him. I miss him a lot. I'm seeing his face and him trying to keep himself calm, taking deep breaths. Um, I, I can't even materialize into words what that feels like as the older brother to watch that happen. The young man's fiance. I just miss my best friend. Mother, brother, and father. It's just hard to continue without him. All in from out of town, hoping this ends in a conviction. It doesn't change how we feel, but he should be held accountable. Cantor's brother Nick says he hopes justice transcends the walls of the courtroom, calling for changes to the criminal justice system and safety improvements in the entertainment district. Being that you can't have a firearm in the bar, I, yeah, I don't believe that there should have been firearms in that, you know, closed street. You can't adequately defend yourself without killing or shooting someone else in such a crowded area. The family says Cantor had just graduated and was in Austin to celebrate. Two years later, his loved ones sit united as they mourn the life they had hoped to be living with him. And expecting to spend the next 70 years with them and that's just ripped out from underneath you. Brianna Hollis. Still, still dealing with it. KXAN yeah. News. 
And cameras are only allowed inside during the opening statements that you saw yesterday and then the closing arguments. But KXAN will have reporters inside that courtroom to bring you updates on the trial throughout the week. And the trial is expected to last until next week. We have new information on the investigations involving people found dead in Lady Bird Lake when we got an APD report. And this revealed some new details on three previously unidentified people found in the water between July and December of 2022. Police say foul play was not involved in any of these cases, and the investigations are now closed. These were people in their 40s and 50s. Police say one of the people who died was a man experiencing homelessness. We also learned that the body police found in the lake last Christmas near the Lamar Pedestrian Bridge was a man killed near the lake a week before. Police say a man shot 45-year-old Jose Moreno on December 19th while Moreno was driving his pickup truck causing the car to crash into the lake. How the largest school district in Central Texas is dealing with an increase in teachers calling out sick. And the new law that would leave some drunk drivers who kill someone paying child support for their victim's children. Good morning, this is a live look from Tampa Bay, Florida, which is just south of where Hurricane Idalia is heading. Uh, still going to see significant impacts in this area though, as we continue to watch the entire western coast of Florida, as this now category four storm is soon set to make landfall. Back to your locally COVID cases on the rise in Austin. And we have some new details on how this is impacting the largest school district in our area. Austin ISD tells our Nabil Ramadna it is seeing more teachers and students testing positive. Summer break has ended and students are back in the classroom. And with them at Austin ISD comes COVID-19 cases. So we are seeing a, a slight increase in cases since the beginning of school. Since August 14th, the district has reported 230 positive cases. 168 of those cases were reported from August 21st to the 27th. If anyone has symptoms, we ask them to stay out get checked by a healthcare professional. The COVID-19 dashboard shows Bowie High School has had 23 cases and Matthews Elementary has had 14 cases. These schools have had more than others. Overall, there have been 107 students who have tested positive in the district and 123 employees. Austin Public Health says more people across Austin are testing positive. Since last week, we've seen a 33% increase. But those numbers could be higher than what's being reported. People are doing self-testing uh, or they're not testing at all. And so that number of true positive cases is probably underrepresented in our community. AISD relies on parents and teachers to self-report any positive cases, which helps them keep track of any growing trends. We are so reliant on them reporting this. AISD says they'll continue to monitor the situation and encourage being safe. Encouraging good practices, hand washing, covering the mouth, staying home when you're ill, those practices are gonna be in place. Nabil Ramadna, KXAN News. We checked in with some of our other larger districts in the area. Leander ISD's online dashboard is reporting a seven day average of almost 11 daily positive cases. In Round Rock ISD, different story as its online dashboard says, quote, Texas public schools are no longer required to report positive COVID-19 cases on school campuses. You may remember this week we reported that Austin Public Health saw a 33% increase in the past week in COVID-19 cases. APH has an online tracking system to report those positive cases. And while it is not required that you submit the results of any kind of at-home tests you take, it can help doctors understand the true spread of the virus in the community. Have you seen this man? What he is accused of doing in an Austin couple's home while they were sleeping. A familiar fight, the battle in Austin and in Texas when it comes to what materials can be used in the classrooms. Texas volleyball team with a top five opponent on Tuesday night. Longhorn football team hoping Saturday is the start of something big. I've got more on that coming up. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. Down to a couple of days of preparation for the Longhorns before they take the field on Saturday afternoon against Rice. Year three for Steve Sarkeesian. 
Figures he has his best roster, has his best team, and his best chance to at least get to Arlington and play for a Big 12 title. He's got veteran players. They're now veterans with him, and he hopes that makes a big difference this season. We've put in a lot of work over three years, and those older players have been here for this journey. Yeah, they, they've been here for, for five and seven. They were here a year ago after a, a couple tough losses, a couple big wins. Um, and now, you know, how do we want the movie to go this year, you know? And then what are they willing to do to set the stage to write that script so that movie can play out? Well, the movie played out well for the Longhorn volleyball team last year. National title lost their opener at Long Beach, then won against Loyola Marymount in California in Minnesota last night. And how about the Minnesota transfer, Jenna Wenis? Each team winning the first two sets, so that pivotal third set goes to Texas and the Longhorns trying to close it out and they do just that Madison Skinner with the kill Longhorns with the win now they come home to take on Stanford in their home opener at Greg Jim high school football tomorrow night will be at the field in Pflugerville Weiss with an impressive win over Round Rock last week the Wolves will be playing host to LBJ that's a seven o'clock start on KBVO back to you all right, we've got the big game coming up, too, as he mentioned uh, on Saturday in the afternoon when it's very hot. <laughs> Kristen, right. I know you have the forecast for that, and you're busy watching what's happening in Florida, too. Yeah, it, it is one of those things now that we're within a few hours of landfall. We're going to get updates from the National Hurricane Center every hour. So they just uh, gave back that data that the hurricane hunters found. We're going to talk about Hurricane Idalia, now a Category 4 storm here in just about a minute and a half. But let me prioritize your local forecast, get you ready for what we've got as far as our skies go today. Right now, radar is quiet across the state. We've got temperatures in those 70s. It's actually much cooler this morning than what we felt yesterday. Currently sitting at 74. Winds are quiet. Humidity not bad. In fact, our feels like temperatures match those actual air temperatures that the thermometer is showing me. So not too bad of a start, uh, especially for this time of year and especially considering what kind of summer we've had. Temperatures, as you can see, upper 60s to low 70s across the board. Getting back into the low 100s today, forecast high 101. Itty bitty rain chance this afternoon. This is nothing that I would get excited about, nothing to rearrange your plans over. What's going to happen here is we've got just a little bit of a disturbance nearby that could spark one or two little spits here out of the sky. It's nothing that will be measurable when it comes to rainfall, but I didn't want to totally disregard it in case you saw yourself finding your, uh, finding your family underneath one of those little darker clouds later today around the bus stop pickup. It will not be severe. It will not be heavy. In fact, consider yourself lucky if you do feel a few raindrops because the drier air here at the surface will be working against those rain chances. We've got real low humidity today, tomorrow, and for the most part, Friday. Reason is we've got a nice north-northeast wind that typically brings drier air to central Texas. That's what we've been dealing with for the last couple of days. That's what we'll see today before the humidity uh, it does start to increase this weekend. That will be matched with the rise in temperatures, but it doesn't get out of control. We're only talking about a two to three degree warm up here heading into Labor Day weekend. Now, Hurricane Idalia, like I said, hurricane hunters went out this morning. They found those winds to be stronger. So we've got 130 mile per hour winds within this storm. It is moving north northeast uh, faster than what it was yesterday at 18 miles per hour. We expect landfall here probably anywhere within about 7, 8, 9 a.m. right along the Big Bend coast here of Florida. But I do want to be very clear. This is not just a Florida storm. We have impacts well inland with very heavy rain, tropical storm to even hurricane force winds still within that storm as it moves through southern Georgia. The Carolinas will get slammed with heavy be rain here by the end of the day today before this system eventually clears itself out out back into the Atlantic by tomorrow around midday. No impacts from Idalia here at home, but we will be watching that very closely for our friends and family uh, dealing with a very destructive day in Florida. 7 day, 10% chance or less of that sprinkle today. 101 as the high you see there. Temperature is about 102 to 103. Moving forward into the weekend, Labor Day looking dry. Temperatures overnight pretty mild. Low to mid 70s most mornings. Austin police need your help finding a person accused of going into a couple's home while they were sleeping. Happened Saturday morning in North Austin on Whispering Valley Drive, just north of Duval Road, west of Mopac. Police say this is the man. Two people said they saw him standing in their bedroom when they woke up. 
and then he ran away. If you recognize him, please call police. And if you're listening on the podcast and you want to get a closer look at the photo that police handed us, go to KXAN.com and search trespass. There's going to be tougher punishments for Texans convicted in deadly drunk driving cases. That's right. There's a new law that goes into effect Friday. It's going to force drunk drivers who kill parents to pay child support. Daniel Marin took a look into the law, the new one, and what woman is doing, what one woman was doing to take action to her own hands and make Texas roads safer. Erin Crawford Bowers was too young to remember the worst day of her life, but she still lives with the scars. I had a, a severe concussion, I had a broken arm, a broken leg, um, and it was immediately orphaned. The Houston native was six months old when a crash involving a drunk driver killed both of her parents back in 1985. Now married with children of her own, she's hoping her story will help prevent other families from dealing with the same type of tragedy. I continue to support this fight for the state of Texas for the greater good because there has to be change. And there are so many new victims every single day. HB 393 is set to take effect this Friday, September 1st. The new law will require anyone convicted of intoxication manslaughter to pay child support if they kill a parent with young children in a car crash. Some of the factors taken into account for the penalty they would have to pay include the financial resources of any surviving guardian, as well as the, quote, standard of living the child is accustomed to. And if someone can't pay because they're in prison, they'll have to start paying a year after they get out. However, the bill only applies to cases after it takes effect, rather than the ones that have already happened. And while this law may help decrease drunk driving, for those like Crawford Bowers, it's too late. I got married and just wanted my father to walk me down the aisle. That didn't happen. Or the day I had my babies and, you know, you just want your mom by your side. And I didn't get that. Daniel Marin reporting for us. We did reach out to the state lawmaker who wrote the bill for an explanation on the stipulation that the payments must meet the child's standard of living and what exactly does that mean and we're waiting to hear back from him. Going in depth, according to Forbes, Texas had the highest number of drunk drivers under 21 involved in deadly crashes in 2020. Nearly 40% of traffic deaths that same year were caused by a drunk driver. The last day they were, there were zero traffic deaths in Texas was a long time ago, back on November 7th, 2000. And since then, TxDOT says 65,000 people have died on Texas roadways. Texas education leaders are meeting this week on the future of what children are taught in the classroom. On the agenda, proposed changes to science textbooks and educational materials allowed in Texas schools. Some State Board of Education members are denouncing a proposal to use instructional videos from PragerU it's a nonprofit that calls itself a conservative alternative to, quote, left wing education. The organization initially said it's coming to Texas classrooms, but it still needs approval from the state. And some advocates are calling on the board to prevent that. Tiger U's misleading announcement that they're coming to Texas has been deeply troubling. Partially because, of course, as we've heard today, it was made without any approval and any real discussion with our State Board of Education, but also because of the harmful misinformation and dramatic inaccuracies. Also outside the Capitol yesterday, calls to update science textbooks with more accurate information on climate change and evolution. The, board, the books that the board approves this year will be used for the next 10 years. And the way that Texas funds schools under the so-called Robin Hood style of recapture, it's frustrated countless districts and parents for years. A long time, but there's one district in the Houston area that just told the Texas Education Agency it's not going to send back the money, not sending recapture dollars back to the state. And it's Spring Branch ISD in West Houston. It's considered a property-rich district with more property value per student than the state formula allows. Every year, Spring Branch has to cut a check to the state. And last year, that total came just under $80 million. Monday night, the school board said enough and voted to give the superintendent the authority to withhold the money. We simply cannot afford to continue making these large payments year after year without decimating our district. 
District leaders say they are now exploring their legal options, including any potential actions at the state. The school board vice president did say Texas could do a number of things, including reducing state revenue payments or even selling some of their property to other school districts. Now, this is an issue that we've seen right here in Austin. When it comes to Austin ISD, often paying the most recapture dollars, the most. The district estimates for the 2024 year, they're going to need to send some $940 million to the state of Texas. But even smaller districts in Central Texas have struggled with the impact of the Austin Metro growth. We've told you about issues at Pflugerville ISD. Last year, there were concerns that the district would need to close campuses because they didn't have enough money in the budget. This year, the district says it is preparing to send $20 million to the state in recapture money. The board has called for tax rate election for the voters to put on the ballot in November. For those listening in on the KXAN Today podcast, thank you for being with us. Here's what else we're tracking at 5 on KXAN Today. Austin's airport expanding ahead of what is expected to be a busy Labor Day weekend. The new changes you can see. Thanks for joining KXAN News Today. You can also listen to KXAN News Nightly every weekday after 5.30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.